But wait, wait a second. What I really want to know is if you're making a roadmap of a human being, which human beings are we mapping? I mean, humans come in so many varieties, so whose genes exactly are we looking at? Yeah, it's mostly a guy from Buffalo and a woman from Buffalo. That's because the laboratory... Wait, 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 an making... anonymous couple from Buffalo? No, they're not a couple. They're not a couple. Oh. They've never met. I see. The laboratory was a laboratory in Buffalo. And so they put an ad in Buffalo newspapers, and they got random volunteers from Buffalo. They got about 20 of them, and chose at random this sample and that sample and that sample. So nobody knows who they are. And what about Solera? Whose DNA are they mapping? They also got a bunch of volunteers, around 20, and picked five lucky winners. We tried to have some diversity in terms of we had an African-American, uh, somebody self-proclaimed Chinese ancestry, uh, two Caucasians, and a Hispanic. So uh, some of the volunteers were here on the staff. And I have to ask, because everybody does, are you one of them? Uh, I am one of the volunteers, yes. Do you know whether you, whether you are one of the winners? I have a pretty good idea, yes, uh, but uh, I, I can't disclose that because um, it, it, it doesn't matter. Well, Anybody if you're the head of the company and you're watching the decoding of la, that has a little Miss Piggy quality to it. Well, mm -hmm. any scientist that I know would love to be looking at their own genetic code. I mean, how could you not want to and work in this field? Well, I don't know. I don't work in this field, but I do wonder. Could any small group, and could that guy from Buffalo, could he really be a stand-in for all humankind? Hasn't it been drummed into us since birth that we're all different, each and every one of us completely unique? We certainly look different. People come in so many shapes and colors and sizes, the DNA of these humans has got to be significantly different from the DNA of this human, right? The genetic difference between any two people, one-tenth of a percent. Those two and any two people on this planet are 99.9% .9 identical at the DNA level. It's only one letter in a thousand difference. And if I were to bring secretly into another room a black man, an Asian man, and a white man, and show you only their genetic code, could you tell which one was the Probably white not. What's going on? Well, it tells us that first, as a species, we are very, very closely related, because any two humans being 99.9% .9 identical means that we're much more closely related than any two chimpanzees in Africa. Wait, 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 wait. You mean if two chimpanzees are swinging through the forest and you look at the genes of chimp A and the genes of chimp B, average difference between average those difference. chimps is four or five times more than the average difference between two humans that you would pluck off this planet. Because we're such a young species? That's right. See, the thing is, we are the descendants of a very small founding population. Every human on this planet goes back to a founding population of perhaps 10 or 20,000 people in Africa about 100,000 years ago. That little population didn't have a great deal of genetic variation. And what happened was it was successful. It multiplied all over the world. But in that time, relatively little new genetic variation has built up. And so we have today on our planet about the same genetic variation that we walked out of Africa with. So people are incredibly similar to each other. But not only that, it turns out we also share many genes with, well, everything. 50% of the genes in a banana are well, enough. How different are you from a banana? I feel, and I feel I can say this with some authority, very different from a banana. You may feel different I from eat a banana. banana. But yeah. I have never... But look, you've got, you've got cells. You've got to make those cells divide. The, all the machinery for replicating your DNA, all the machinery for controlling the cell cycle, the cell surface, for making uh, nutrients, all that's the same in you and a banana. Deep down, 
the fundamental mechanisms of life were worked out only once on this planet. And they've gotten reused in every organism. The closer and closer you get to a cell, the more you see you know, a bag with stuff in it and a nucleus, and most of those basic functions are the same. Evolution doesn't go reinvent something when it doesn't have to. Take baker's yeast. Baker's yeast were related to one and a half billion years ago. But even after one and a half billion years of evolutionary separation, the parts were still interchangeable for lots of these genes. Now, does that mean, I just want to, I'm sure if I understand this right, does that mean when you look through those things at all the C's and the A's and the T's and the T's and the G's, are you seeing the exact same letter sequences in the exact same alignment? When you look at the yeast and you look at the person, is it C, 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 A, T, T, T? It's eerie. The gene sequence is almost identical. There are some genes like ubiquitin that's 97% identical between humans and yeast, even after a billion years of evolution. Oh, with a name like that, it's got to be. Well, yeah, but you've got to understand that deep down, we are very much partaking of that same bag of tricks that evolution's been using to, to make organisms all over this planet.